my name is Tanya Bonatti. I'm the Director of Creative Ireland. I'm also a graduate of DCU, a Masters in Film and Television. And I'm here to introduce the students today to the Creative Ireland programme, which is a very ambitious all of government initiative around creativity, culture and well-being. So my focus today is really to talk through the ambitions of enabling the creative potential of every child and all the work that we're doing in primary and post-primary schools around creativity and education. And then secondly, to talk about creative communities and the wide programme of activities that we have in all 31 local authorities around creativity, culture and well-being. Uh, thank you, Joan. Uh, when Joan asked me to do this a couple of weeks back and she said, oh, there'll be a couple of hundred students, I thought, oh, yeah. Gee, first, I certainly didn't expect this crowd. So it's a real honour to be here. Um, I'm a former graduate of DCU. I did, before it was actually DCU, I did a master's in film and television here. So it's, it's a real uh, joy for me to be back and to, to talk to you today. So Creative Ireland, I'm kind of not surprised that not so many of you know what it's about. Um, but when the job was advertised last December, and it was advertised in the paper, and as Joan said, the tagline is how to put creativity at the centre of public policy, I just thought, wow, what an incredibly ambitious sort of statement of intent. Um, and it came out of something that some of you may experience, those of you who I think there are a lot of first years here. So you would have been in secondary school perhaps around the time of the 2016 commemorations. So you may remember that the army read the proclamation in schools and lots of schools did projects around the proclamation of independence and what it meant. And then there were half a million people on the streets of Dublin. Uh, there was this huge uh, procession down O'Connell Street, an army flyover, and everything that came from that. So basically, Creative Ireland grew out of the commemorations project, where um, it was such a kind of transformative experience. It was much more positive. I think some people were nervous that maybe because of the history of war in our country that it would be a very tense time. But in fact, it was um, people really got behind it. And certainly all the local communities doing all these projects was something that the Taoiseach at the time, Enda Kenny, uh, said to the guy who was running the programme before me, John Concanon, my God, we should really capture this and we should build on it, we shouldn't let it go. So basically, um, it's been going for about a year, um, although maybe not much known to you, it has certainly captured the public Im imagination. And when I go around, people kind of go, Jesus, Creative Ireland, it sounds great, what the hell is it? So um, there are basically five pillars to what we do. And the reason that I really wanted the job was, I think pillar one, because I think it's potentially the most transformative thing that we're going to do, which is uh, called Creative Youth. And the ambition is to enable the creative potential of every child in Ireland. And just sort of stop to ponder that for a second. Every child in Ireland with some very specific commitments around access to uh, participation and tuition in music, in drama, in coding, kind of a random selection of things. But basically, the government said, we really want to do this for children. And the Creative Ireland programme is what's known as an all of government initiative. And there aren't too many of them in Ireland. So when I started my job nearly five months ago, I was like, well, what other all of government initiatives are there? And there aren't too many. So the first is about enabling the creative potential of every child. And I'm going to go through some of that with you. The second is called Creative Communities. And arising out of everything that happened with the commemorations, we now have a Creative Ireland coordinator in every local authority. And what does that mean? That's all about creativity right down at the community level. And it's really differently expressed, as you'll see, with some amazing variety of projects that people feel um, expresses creativity in their community. Pillar three is around the whole creative infrastructure, soft and hard, the creative industries, and then how do we talk about ourselves internationally and our global reputation? So I'll do a whistle-stop tour through these things. Uh, creative youth, as I said, is around enabling the creative potential of every child. Now, that's obviously a, a very ambitious goal, but what does that really mean? Well, 
We know from a lot of research that predates establishing Creative Ireland that children who engage in creative activities and arts activities perform better in school and are more confident later in life. And you don't need to take my word for it. You may or may not have heard of a very famous longitudinal study that's taking place, I think, over 10 to 15 years, the ESRI Growing Up in Ireland study, which is tracking children from a very young age right through to adulthood. It's not only looking at the arts, far from it, but we, we asked the, um, the group who are doing that research to look at a cohort of children who did access arts activities and those who didn't. So it's just an interesting piece of research. And it very much chimes with what we feel around enabling the creative potential of every child. So we started about a year ago and we have started on a number of different projects. And when I was coming here today, I thought, you know, the people who are sitting in the hall now who are first years, I wonder if I was to come back in five or 10 years time, will, will it be a different kind of conversation? Because as many of you know, there's a lot of unhappiness around the Leaving Cert and senior cycle, a lot of learning by rote, learning off by heart. There's a lot of things that you can do that are quite creative in primary school and up to transition year. And then after that, it's kind of like, well, the fun's over, knuckle down. And we are busy trying to change people's um, attitudes about what the Leaving Cert should be. However, to start, there are 4,000 schools in Ireland. I learned this uh, as soon as I started in the job. So when the government says every child in Ireland, what that meant to me was we are going to have to work in every school in Ireland. It's the only way to reach every child. Um, so we are really at the foothills now with 150 schools. But the idea is that things that we're starting this year, we will hope to mainstream across all schools in Ireland. So um, schools could apply to be a creative school. And over the summer, very interestingly, nearly 10% of all the schools in Ireland applied to us for this programme. And the Department of Education was really surprised about this, but we certainly weren't because when we go and consult with young people in schools, when we consult with parents, we absolutely hear back that there is a certain frustration about the rigidity of the curriculum. And students say, we'd love things to be taught more creatively. We'd love more arts and fun approaches to learning. So the idea behind the creative schools is that an artist or a teacher who is also an artist will work with these 150 schools to develop a whole creative plan for the school. So this isn't about one project like make a mural. This is about creativity in the whole school, starting with children who will be consulted about what creativity means to them. And it won't surprise you to know that people think about creativity in a much broader sense than just the arts. Um, so we've, we've done consultations with children in primary and post-primary school, and we find a great a appetite for it, but also a really broad interpretation of creativity. So the artist's job would be to work with the students, to work with the teachers and the whole school community to devise a plan for the school and it will be bespoke to that school. So if you're a small little uh, primary school in North Donegal, maybe music is what you really want to do and you might dev devise a whole series of music projects for the school. Other people might say it's filmmaking or coding, it can be anything really. It's up to them to decide and we will direct all the resources of the state to those 150 schools. So there's a lot of things happening happening, as you may or may not be aware, if you had this in your school, there's poetry allowed. If you are studying film, the Film Institute will come in and teach you modules about your French course through French film. So we'll just make sure that those 150 schools are really given the best resources possible so that we can go back to the Minister of Education and go, this is important, this works, the teachers welcome it, the students welcome it, and this has been the impact on students. So like I say, we're at the foothills trialing these things. The second thing is clusters, a bit of a buzzword in education at the moment, school clusters. These are two to five schools who are going to work together on arts projects to see what's the difference when a number of schools work together and what does that bring. So like I say, we're, we're trialling a lot of things. Um, we also have a very big commitment. Some of you may have been in schools where you came across Music Generation which you um, may or may not be aware was initially funded by U2 and the Ireland Funds. So it was a big philanthropic donation by U2 to give children access to music, particularly children who, from their family circumstances, wouldn't have that. So access to instruments, access to teachers. Um, what we have done under the Creative Ireland programme is that we are lifting that programme and we are making it nationwide. So by 2020, Music Generation will have rolled out across Ireland. The U2 Funds will 
will roll back, they will decrease their investment and the state will step forward. And we will have that promise about every child having access to music will hopefully be ultimately uh, delivered through the Music Generation programme. We're also looking at teachers and their teaching practice um, with feedback that sometimes uh, teachers feel they're not as creative as they would like to be. So we've invested a lot in CPD for teachers over the summer months. Um, two examples are where a teacher will work with an artist over the summer and then that artist will go back into the school with the teacher in the autumn and do an artistic project to kind of support the teacher because some of them feel a little uncomfortable in that space. We're also working with organisations like the Design and Crafts Council of Ireland um, on, on things like um, visual thinking, the Abbey Theatre on English, and basically giving teachers access to new resources and new support so they can deliver the leaving and junior cycle more creatively. We um, came up with the idea of Crinuna Nog this year. Um, which is, it's called a day of youthful creativity, but basically we are now, we've discovered, the first country in the world to do something like this. So this is a free day in the summer for children and young people across Ireland, where basically they get to try out creative uh, activities, free of charge, free at the point of use. Um, and we worked with the Creative Ireland coordinators in every local authority. Again, it's about giving people who perhaps haven't had access to that before. And I think no better than maybe we could play the video now, we can just hear the voice of children about how they experienced it on one of the glorious summer days this year. fun as well, there's a lot of laughs. Okay. Yeah, I really liked it. It was cool. It was... It's good. We just get to express yourself. It was really fun. I'm really enjoying it so far. The songs are great. I like the big one you miss the little kid. I just like gluing it because I was that was the best part. Everybody was just chilling, listening to music and all so I was just having great fun today. I have never done anything like this before. I didn't think I'd be able to. gone up in up in stage because I didn't think if people didn't enjoy hearing me sing and when it was done and over with I felt happy in myself. You get to meet new people, new personalities and yeah you just get to learn a lot. It was just really fun and nice to have a good time with your friends and they were all clapping when we finished song, so I guess it was good, yeah. I mean, there's a bit of crack, there's a lot of laughing. It's really unique. So, what I loved about that day, um, and I think the reason I really wanted the opportunity to do this work was that when the Taoiseach and now the current Taoiseach, Leo Varadkar, conceived of the programme and I went to meet the team, they said, this isn't about the jobs of the future. It's not about where we want children to be 10 years from now. And somebody used the phrase, beings not becoming by which they meant it's about where children and young people are at now, that this is just a good, a public good, a thing to have, a thing that we should offer all our children. Not because we think, oh God, 10 years from now, they'll be able to do the jobs that haven't been invented yet. That's not to say that isn't important, but it was just, I, I really liked just the, the ambition of the programme that it was a good thing in and of itself. 
So um, the Sea Scouts project I put up there because I thought it was a great example of what does creativity really mean. So the Sea Scouts would traditionally be doing Sea Scouty things. But as part of this project, over six months, they went to the galleries and they looked at paintings of the sea. Then they went to the National Museum and they learned about sea shanties and songs of the sea. Then they built their own instruments, homemade instruments inspired by the sea. And then on that one day in June, they all headed down to Clontarf and they sang their songs. So this isn't just about something that happens on one day. It's about sort of experiences that you can give children that will really leave an impression with them. So that's a lot of what we're doing around children and young people. Next up is the idea of creative communities, which is really harnessing what happened back in 2016 and going, there's really great things being done at local level that don't necessarily need to be a big nationally funded arts organization, but are about creating great places to live, uh, building social cohesion and good communities. And so we have responded in that a third of the Creative Ireland budget is given to the Creative Ireland coordinators in the local authorities. And basically, that's our, like, our shock troops on the ground. So this is how we're able to go around the country working with these people. Um, and I thought no better way than to perhaps play the video and give you an example of one of the projects, just one that we funded this year that I, I thought was wonderful. Hi, I'm Victoria and this is my story. I founded the Sugar Factory Studios with thanks to Creative Ireland and Carlow County Council. This project allowed me to come home from Dubai and collaborate with other artists. The Sugar Factory was, was Carlow's most iconic industry, definitely. So I kind of wanted to tap into that spirit that is alive in our town and relate it towards creativity and the production of art. That's kind of where we got the name here at the Sugar Factory Studios. This project is something that I've always wanted to do. I've always really, really believed in Carlo's creative spirit. The project is an artist in residency program and we've uh, two artists working in the space and um, they're working on new projects and they're developing their works and getting new concepts and development of ideas. My experience with rural immigration is that I thought I did have to leave to find work but I'm, I'm happy to be back and I'm happy to, to see uh, a bit of a growth within the community. Creative communities is just one way that Creative Ireland is enabling Ireland to be more creative. So for me, what really blew me away was the variety of ideas that different communities are coming up with around the country. So that was one example of Carlo. We have funded a farm for people with intellectual disabilities where they go and do some farming, but they also do arts activities. We have restored a boat that's going to sail down into Limerick shortly. We funded filmmakers in residence. And what's really fantastic is just the breadth of different ideas about what creativity means in local communities when it's decided by the communities themselves. It's interesting how much of an emphasis there is on kind of intergenerational projects. So we have a, a choir in Donegal that goes from aged eight to 88. Uh, we have uh, choirs for people with dementia, but where they're working with the likes of Lisa O'Neill and Charlie O'Connor and well-known musicians. So it really is incredibly varied. I'll whiz through the others. Cultural and creative infrastructure, what does that mean? Well, basically it means initially all the buildings. So uh, the government recently announced something called Project 2040, which is a massive capital investment programme. And Creative Ireland went in and pitched to Minister Pascal Donoghue. And um, when we went in to see him, he said, I'm going to say something to you, which you'll probably never experience again with the Minister for Finance, which is you're getting everything you asked for. So we nearly fell off the chair. 725 million for culture and creative activities. It's um, the largest single ever investment by the state, by this government um, in particular. And what does it mean? Well, the bulk of it is going to go for a whole set of new buildings for the public. So the Abbey Theatre, our national theatre, will be getting a new building. The Concert Hall will be getting a complete refurbishment and extension. The Crawford Gallery in Cork, the National Archives, a huge investment. Um, some of you may be aware of the National Gallery, which was kind of ahead of its time. So it's, it wasn't done under our project. But I'm going to just play you a video that we, we made with the National Gallery just to give you an idea of when a building reopens after a wonderful refurbishment and what the people of Dublin thought when they went to see it. The 
there was nobody standing near me that I could turn and grab and say, oh, look at that. Colours, characters. Action and life. Colour, the background, the shadows. Just blow my mind. That piece of sculpture had such an effect on me. We might the very to... first time I came into the gallery. I used to love, as a kid, conjuring up these stories in my head when I was walking around the gallery, look at different paintings of who these people were, what their lives involved. Of all the, the parts of the story that Burton could have chosen to depict, he showed this quite peaceful moment. They're choosing to, uh, to try and hold this moment and remember this moment. This is the thing that they want to be thinking of as, as they, they both face the end. The painting conveys a lot of emotion. It really is not trying to be something very nice. It's kind of like heavy metal for art definitely very moving in a heavy kind of way. Well, I guess some people think that they're outdated or they are kind of dated, but you know, at some point in time, it meant a lot to someone. In those times, they didn't have cameras. You know, there was no such thing as like Instagram or if you go into that mindset, you would find a, a different frame of uh, appreciation for these works. There's this little moment on the wall that you can peer at for a very long time and still find really interesting things that kind of relate to the kind of life that you might have yourself. My two daughters were small, they used to, they used to go to ballet, ballet lessons, and it kind of reminded me then a bit of one giving the other advice, what, what she's doing wrong and what she should be doing. I associate excitement. I think everyone's quite gritting their teeth to see who wins. Like the first time I looked at it, I was just like, I just saw a load of colours coming out of my face. The second time I looked at it, I saw loads of different shapes and the kind of colours coincide with each other. And then the more I kind of got into the painting, the more I looked at it. It was actually telling a story. You don't see everything at the one time. You, can, you have to go back and you look at it again, you see something else, you know? That's the great thing about paintings. And um, there's always, they're always changing. You'll always see something different. I saw they're kind of a living thing. Coming here um, once a month or as soon as I can, and it just uh, helps you to think in different ways. It's a place where you can see really, really beautiful things um, in a very, very calm space. And I don't think you have to be that highbrow. You need to just connect with the things that you really, really love and make you feel, you know, something inside. That's what happened when the National Gallery was refurbed, and the good news is that all the buildings I've referred to over the next 10 years will be completely overhauled for the people of Ireland, and we'll really have a creative and cultural infrastructure to be proud of. So finally, the, the last things that we're doing, and this is a very ambitious government programme, is the creative industries. So uh, the government has really stepped up to the idea of really trying to build the potential of those businesses. We focused initially on the screen industries, so we, if you go to our website, you'll see that um, we have an audiovisual action plan, which is quite an ambitious plan to double the number of people working in feature film, TV drama and animation. So the Irish Film Board has been rebranded Screen Ireland, uh, with a promise of an additional 20 million on top of their budget to invest in film production here in Ireland. We've also, two weeks ago in the budget, uh, increased the, the tax incentive, section 481. So that's been extended for another couple of years. <coughs> One of the things that we just haven't had the time to do, but which we'll be turning our attention to next is, what does a policy for all the creative industries look like? Our previous uh, speaker from Accenture spoke about the design world that she was involved in, and my background previously was in advertising. So what would a joined up policy that would promote graphic design, product design, UX design, fashion, architecture, all of those other creative industries. What kind of support do they need? So that's something that we're certainly thinking about how best to do that. And then finally, how are we going to solve the funding deficit in RTE, which is really under financial pressure and is not in a position to sustain 
the, the, the film and TV industry as much as it would like to because of its underfunding and the, uh, the underpayment of the license fee. So lots of big challenges in that space. And finally, our global reputation. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, the government published something called Global Ireland 2025, which talks about how we will project an image of, of ourselves in the world post-Brexit, because that's going to create a lot of challenges, as we know, for Ireland. Um, and there's some very specific promises that don't have anything to do with Creative Ireland, which are around our overseas development aid, military spending, and that kind of thing. What was interesting to me was that the government had a, a whole chapter, Arts, Culture and Creativity, as a way of talking about ourselves in the world. So there will be increased funds for Culture Ireland, which is a sister agency in the Department of Culture where I'm based, which is about funding Irish artists to go overseas. We're going to have cultural attaches in some of the key cities whose job it will be to make really strong connections for Irish artists with big galleries and museums and art centres so that we can have opportunities to develop the careers of Irish artists abroad. Um, there is, uh, some of you may have seen, Ed Sheeran has lent his support to the new Irish Art Centre in Camden. Um, and then we're, we're also funding one in New York. Um, and we have one, only one art centre in the world outside Ireland, which is the Centre Culturel in Paris, but we will shortly have two more in London and New York. So really exciting and ambitious plans that the state has to, to, I guess, project an image of ourselves as a creative country and also promote the careers of artists. So basically, I'll leave it there, happy to answer any questions. Um, if you want to follow us, please do so. We have lots of different ways that you can engage with us.